Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. This is question number six from the International A Level Ed Excel, um, <clears throat> October 2021 Mechanics M1 exam. And this question here is about a small ball which is from vertically upwards at time t equals zero from a point A, which is above horizontal ground. The ball hits the ground seven seconds later. The ball is modeled as a particle moving freely under gravity. The velocity time graph shown in figure three represents the motion of the ball from zero to seven seconds. Find the speed with which the ball is thrown. Okay, so we have here an object that's thrown from a point which is above the ground. So I'm gonna like, let's say this is the ground. Let's say this is the point above the ground, um, which is let's put up here somewhere. Let's call this point, this, this is the level of A. This is A above the ground. Okay, so it's, it's thrown from here. All right, and it reaches the top of its flight. Let's say the top of its flight is B. So it's thrown from, from this point. It goes up to the top of its flight. It reaches um, the top of its flight. Its velocity is zero. So that's actually at this point here. So you see it's decelerating. Okay, it's, it's getting slower and slower and slower and slower. That means they've basically taken up as positive. All right, and it's accelerating towards the ground with a gra with the acceleration of gravity due to gravity's vertical motion under gravity so it's reached the top of its flight here so at that at that point we know that the velocity is zero and we know the time is 2.5 seconds and then it falls all the way back to the ground and that's when time is seven seconds this is when time is zero seconds this is the initial speed we don't know and we have to find that so let's put all the information we have into the equation for SUVAT. So we know that this is constant acceleration due to gravity. We don't know the displacement between A and B. We do know that the, well, we do know we have to find the initial velocity. We do know that the final velocity, meaning we're considering here between um, the points A and B. Between A and B, that's what we're considering here. Okay, so this is like the initial, this is the final in this particular section here. So here the final velocity is zero. That's the point at which it reaches the top of its flight. I'm not considering the whole journey. I'm not considering until it reaches this point. Let's call this point C. We're considering between A and B. And we're worrying about the, you know, the situation at A and the situation at B. Uh, the acceleration is negative 9.8 because obviously they've taken up as positive because this has got a negative gradient there. And the time is 2.5 seconds. So this is enough for us to find the value of u because from our SUVAT equations, we've got the most basic one, which is v equals u plus at. So we have to find u. We know v is zero because it's reached the top of this flight. It's, it's going to become zero for an instant at that point. So we know that v is zero. u is what we have to find. a is negative 9.8 and time is 2.5 seconds. So zero equals, you have negative 9.8 multiplied by 2.5 that gives you minus 24.5 so u minus 24.5 is 0 therefore u is equal to 24.5 meters per second so the speed you can say the initial speed with which it was thrown is equal to 24.5 meters per second so there's the answer to part a now we're going to move on to part B. It says, find the height of A above the, above the ground. So we need to find this height here. Okay, we need to find the height of A above the ground. So what I can do is I can consider the displacement between A and C. We call this level C. So if we consider from A to C, from A to C, okay, and again we use the SUVAT equations, S-U-V-A-T. Now I know... S is what I'm trying to find. I've called it H. U is the initial velocity with which it was thrown. So it's initially thrown with the velocity that we found, which is negative 24.5. Negative, well, well, sorry, it's not negative. It's 24.5. I don't know why, it's, why I said negative. 24.5, that's the initial velocity here, meters per second. The final velocity, we don't know, because it's not the final velocity as in this one, because now we're considering from A to C. So we're considering from this point to that point. So the initial velocity we know, 
the final velocity, the velocity with which it hits the ground, we don't know. Okay, so we don't know that. That's unknown. Um, A is minus 9.8 and T is 7 seconds. So here we have S and U and A and T. Okay, um, <coughs> we don't know what V is. So we have to try to figure out which one of the equations of motion we can use in order to find what S is. Okay, now what we could do, we could do, we could find what V is at the point where it hits the ground when T equals 7 seconds. We could find that quite easily because we know V equals U plus AT. Um, we could use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Okay, that would also work because we need to find S, so that's H. So if we, if we use S equals UT plus a half AT squared, that would work. So H is equal to U, which is 24.5 times 7. Um, that's T plus a half times negative 9.8 times 7 squared. That will also give me, this is probably the easiest thing to do, use this equation. So we can just stick those into this equation. So we have 24.5 times 7 um, plus a half times negative 9.8 times 7 squared. Okay, and that gives us negative 3, 4, 3 over 5, which as a decimal is negative 68.6. .6. So negative 68.6 meters. Now that's the displacement. That is the displacement of the ball from the place that it was first thrown. We've taken up as positive. So whatever's below that point is going to come out as negative in terms of the value of S. So it makes sense that it's negative, but they're asking us to find the height of A above the ground. So we say the height of A above the ground is therefore the ground is 68.6 .6 meters. We don't put the negative there. That's just in our equation because we've taken this place as the Starting point, anything be, if taken up as positive, anything, any, any displacement above it would be positive, anything below it would be negative. Now that's one way of answering the question. There's probably lots of different ways. We could use different formulae from the uh, SUVA equations. We could even use things like similarity. Like, for example, I could have taken these two as similar triangles. Okay, I could have taken this triangle and this triangle as similar. They are similar because... This is vertical, this is vertical, that's a right angle, that's a right angle. This angle is the same as that angle. So they're, they're similar triangles. So for example, from here to here is 2.5. From here to there will be 4.5. This is 24.5. And this is, for example, you could call it X. And that would be the speed with which it hits the ground. We could find the speed with which it hits the ground. And if you find the speed with, 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 with which it hits the ground, we can find the... Um, um, the displacement by using one of the formulae. We could even find the area of these two, okay, the area of these two triangles, and that should give you the same answer. So if we did find the area of these two triangles, okay, now one of them would have a, um, an area a half times, so it would be 24.5. Let me just put it as a, a fraction from the beginning. So 24.5 times 2.5 divided by 2, that's a half base times height. And then I'll add to it to, to the other area here, but I've got a, this is a negative, remember? Okay, so we, we have to find this actually first. We didn't find this first. Um, okay, let me find that first. Let me find that first. This is going to be x over 24.5 equals 4.5 over 2.5. So it'll be 24.5 times you'll have 4.5 divided by 2.5. That's using similarity. The ratio of the size is the same. So the ratio of these sides is the same as the ratio of those sides. So that will give you 44.1. So this is 44.1 here. 
This is 44.1. That's the speed with which it hits the ground, basically. It's heading downwards, so it has a negative velocity. Okay. All right, so now if you find the area of these two triangles and add them together. So you have 24.5 times 2.5 divided by 2. Now, I'm going to put plus here, and you'll see what happens. This is 4.5 times now think of this this is negative 44.1 so I'll, I'll write it as negative 44.1 and it will it will fit in with what we're doing because we're trying to find the displacement divided by 2 and it should give us exactly the same answer which is the displacement the area under the curve the the velocity time graph tells us the displacement but we have to take this as a as a negative value and that gives us the displacement if we added these two areas it would be the total distance it's traveled in its flight. Okay, if you added the two areas without um, taking care of the sign, if you just found the, the magnitude of this area and that area together, it would be the total distance it's traveled in the whole of the flight. We're, we're looking about uh, how high A is above the ground, which is not the same as the total distance that the ball has traveled. So you have to find the displacement, okay, which is when you add the areas, including you know, the signs as well, taking care of the signs. So you could do it that way. There's lots of ways of answering these questions, by the way. So, you, you know, there could be some of the other SUVA equations or combinations of them you can use to get the same answers. So, you know, that's that, you know, this question answered, which is question number six from the M1 International A-Level October 2021 paper. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this area. Other questions from this topic of SUVAT and, you know, um, motion under gravity and so, those type of questions, kinematics, can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching. See you soon.